What's up my friends, welcome back! So I have a new project for you guys. Actually, this is like an update video about the ESC board that we have seen in a previous project because right now I have this new version. So I want to show the differences between these boards and also talk a little bit about the parts that I haven't explained in that video. As for example, how we detect the back EMF using the internal comparator of the Atmega chip. Because a lot of you guys had some problems understanding that part, but I really think that it's very interesting, so I will do my best to explain that part even better and with more details. At the same time, we will have some more features for this board that I've implemented in the code, as for example how to use the brushless motor as a speaker, so in that way we don't need a buzzer anymore for notifications and stuff like that. And I also have a new version that will be able to rotate the motor both clockwise and also counterclockwise. Because a lot of you guys asked me for that and I think it is very interesting to make it, but for now this code is not that good, it still has some errors so I won't release it yet. But we will see some examples in this video about this version and we will control the motor both clockwise and counterclockwise using the same code, so stay tuned for that. Ok guys, but the most important part for this video is this new PCB. So I want to show you how I've made the PCB smaller and why I removed some components from the older version that weren't so important and also show you how the PCB works. So for that we'll do some tests and I'll try to show you the maximum speed and also the current ratings. But later we'll also see the signals on the oscilloscope and I'll do my best to explain how the ESC works, how the commutation is made and stuff like that. And once we know how this circuit works, I'll try to explain how to use different MOSFETs and maybe use this same circuit but with bigger motors, because a lot of you guys asked me for that in the comment section. But just one thing, I won't share this new PCB and this new code yet, because this will be a kickstarter. But don't worry, I'm still sharing the schematic, the code and the old version of the PCB and you'll have links for that below, in case that you want to order all the components and make the same PCB. As you know, the portable soldering iron wasn't a kickstarter success, but in that case was my first kickstarter and also I've made some errors by using some components that were very expensive as for example the OLED display, the iron tip and so on. And I've also included the price of shipping in the total cost of the product and that made it very difficult for you to purchase. But anyway, I won't make the same error for this kickstarter. In this case the board is very small, it has fewer components and I will be able to also order some pick and place. And that way I'll have the PCB already mounted with all the components solder and all I have to do is to receive the new board, solder some wires from the input and the output, upload the new code and ship that to you guys and it will be ready for tests. So please comment below this video if you would like the idea of a kickstarter about this PCB and do that after you watch this entire video, because in that way you will know how this PCB works and how the PCB performs. So stay tuned for this kickstarter and don't worry I will announce this on the community tab of YouTube, on Facebook, Instagram and more. Ok guys, so let's see this new PCB for the new ESC. But before we start, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell. In this way you won't miss any of my future videos. Also, a huge thank you to all my patrons for supporting my work. And if you'd like to be a patron of mine as well, you'll have links for that below this video. So guys, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. Here I have the new PCB that I've designed for this ESC, which stands for Electronic Speed Controller. This device is used to control a triple phase brushless motor like these ones that are usually used for RC toys, for drones, electric bikes and so on. What's special about this ESC is that it's based on Arduino and it is open source. So you could get the code and the schematic and make one yourself or even improve the design. I recommend you to watch the previous videos as well, in order to understand more. In this video I will explain the parts I haven't explained in the last video about this open source ESC and I hope you'll learn a few new things. To order this board download the second version of this PCB from below this video. Then go to glcpcb.com and select code now. Upload the zip file you have just downloaded and select your settings. I select the black solder mask and 5 PCBs. Now click checkout and select your shipping services. 6 more dollars for shipping to Spain, so a total of 8 dollars for 5 PCBs of any solder mask color. So I receive the boards and give them a first inspection. The black solder mask is quite awesome. This new solder mask is made and it has some sort of texture if you are able to see it. The seal clear looks good and the finish as well. 
I have a lot of exposed tracks and pads, so my PCB has a lot of shiny parts. So once again, thanks to GLC PCB for sponsoring this video. If you want to make your own PCB, consider using the services from GLC PCB for only $2. So guys, let's first see the physical differences of this new board. First of all, as you can see, the board is way smaller. The area is 38% smaller. The old PCB having 2156 square millimeters and the new one only 1331 square millimeters. I've also removed the output pads here, the A, B and C. And now the output wires are soldered directly to the drain of the pads of the MOSFET and that will make the board even more compact. Also, as you can see, the main power tracks are now exposed. If we don't apply a solder mask on top of the tracks, I can fill this with solder and by that it could withstand more current even if the track is not too thick. As you can see below of the solder mask of this old PCB, the main power track of this one was 4mm. Now the power track is only 2mm thick, but filled with solder. Next part you will notice is that we have no USB connector anymore. At the same time, if we don't have the USB connection anymore, we don't need the FTDA programmer neither, so that will save even more space onto the PCB. The reason I removed the USB connector and the FTDA programmer is because this won't be a development board anymore. Once I know the code works, I will only upload it just one time and for that I could use an external FTA programmer since I have these pads here. These are the serial communication pads for the WART port with RX, TX and VTR pins. Even better, if I would mass produce this product, I would remove the WART pads as well and just program the chip before I solder it to the PCB. As you can see, here I have a commercial ESC that is using the Atmega 8 and it's about the same size. I can see no programming pins, so the chip must be programmed before soldered to the PCB. At the same time, I've also put the SPI pins, in case that you need to burn a new bootloader. Because imagine that you order this PCB and you solder all the components, but you have a brand new Atmega chip with no bootloader. You could probably manage to upload the code, but to make it easier, you also have these SPI pins. Ok guys, so let's see more. In the past version I wasn't able to make the brushless motor beep, because I was using the wrong signals. Now I've analyzed the beeping signal from a commercial ESC and applied that to my own code. In this way we don't need the buzzer or the signal LED anymore that the old PCB had. In order to control or program the ESC, you will need some sort of notification signal, so you better use the motor as a speaker or just add a buzzer or notification LED. In this case I'm using the motor as a speaker and by that be able to have a smaller PCB. In case that you want to know how the beeping signal is, here I have it on my oscilloscope. I first thought that this is a simple PWM pulse, but to make the coil sound you have to alternately commutate two coils. So we activate the ground side of the B coil and then alternately enable A and C coils with pulses of 20 microseconds and then 480 microseconds of pause. The entire pulse is 110 milliseconds, and that's how we make those beeps. Ok, now some of you guys were wondering why I still have this buck converter circuit on the board instead of a linear voltage regulator. Well, usually ESCs also have a BEC or battery eliminator circuit. You see, it's very common that when you use an ESC, you will have to supply not just the controller board, but also the radio receiver, maybe some servos, maybe some LEDs and so on, and for that you need a decent amount of current, and the simple LDO usually can deliver that. And even more, the LDOs are not efficient at high loads, they will get very hot and lose power through heat. In case of a drone for example, that's not good, because you want to save battery, and using a buck converter circuit to get the 5V regulation is way better than using an LDO. So, in case that you wonder, that's why I've used a coil and a buck converter IC to get the 5V that I need for the digital part. A blue LED will turn on when power is applied to the board, and that's in order to notify that the board is powered on. These 5V will supply the main chip, but they are also connected to these 3 pins. These pins are ground, 5V and PWM signal input. ESCs are usually controlled with a PWM input from 1000 to 2000 microseconds. Having these 5V here, we could supply the radio receiver and maybe other components, 
such as servos, LEDs or other parts of our RC toy. Now ESCs are commutating a lot with high current and that might create some voltage drops at the input. That's why usually ESCs have a big capacitor at the input pins. So I've soldered a 1 farad capacitor here with the help of some solid wire. So that's pretty much with the board design. Now let's make some tests. I upload the one direction code using the FTDA programmer. Now I remove the programmer wires and then I connect the receiver to the PWM pins of the throttle channel. When you power this up if throttle is minimum, the ESC will start in normal mode and you will hear the welcome beeps. If you don't increase throttle for a few seconds, you will get the standby beeps. Anytime I increase throttle, the motor will start. As you can see, it is very responsive and it will have a decent speed. So the control works quite good. If you want to define the PWM input range, you have to put throttle to maximum before you supply the ESC. Now I supply the ESC and you'll hear a faster beeping and that means that you are into range configuration mode. Now lower throttle to the minimum value and the new range will be saved to the EEPROM of the microcontroller, so you only have to make this just one time. Now let's see the maximum speed. For that I apply a white strip to the outside of the motor. I will use my RPM meter that we've made in a previous tutorial. As you can see I get a speed up to 14,000 rotation per minute. I'm using a supply voltage of 13 volts to simulate a 3S battery. This board could work up to 4S batteries, but I haven't made too much test with that. I now increase the voltage up to 19 volts and it could reach up to 20,000 rotation per minute. By breaking the motor I was able to get current spikes of over 10 amps and the MOSFETs were not even hot. The brushless motor did get a little bit hot, but not the MOSFETs. The end channel MOSFETs that I'm using are the IRL R7843 and these are rated to 30 volts and 113 amps continuous. You could always get higher current ratings by using different and bigger MOSFETs or maybe place few MOSFETs in parallel. If you want to use this board with higher voltage, you must change the voltage divider values. Right now I'm using a 10K and a 33K resistor but you will need a different value in order to lower the voltage under 5 volts. Also the buck converter circuit won't work with voltages above 24 volts, so have that in mind. Ok guys, now about the back EMF sensing. In each part of the rotating sequence, one coil is connected to positive, one to negative and the last one will be floating and that means it's not connected to anything. The moving magnets on the outside of the motor will induce a voltage drop inside of these coils. So in order to know the position of the rotor, all we have to do is to join these three coils together through some resistors to limit the current. So this will be our common value, a virtual zero. Then each time the floating coils will pass this value, we'll make the switch to the next step. So this is called a zero cross switching and the switch could be from positive to negative or from negative to positive and that's why in the code we'll have a falling or rising detection. In order to detect the zero cross, we have to connect each coil to a comparator and compare that signal with the virtual zero we have made before. But for that we need three comparators and also interruptions. So a better way to do this is to use the internal comparator that I said in the last video. The Atmega 328 microcontroller has a programmable comparator and the positive input of this comparator is fixed on the digital pin D6. The cool thing about this comparator is that it's programmable and we could select in the code what pin will be connected to the negative input of the comparator. So in this case when A is high and B is low, we connect coil C to the comparator and by that we detect the zero cross. Then we switch A high and C low and connect the B coil to the comparator and detect once again the zero cross. In this way we don't need external comparators, extra tracks or use interruptions. Everything is done internally and this works quite good. In the code I've placed comments on how to disable the ADC input, select the multiplexer for the comparator input and set the comparator to rising or falling edge. So read the code for more. 
Ok guys, now let's make the final test, with the reversed function. As I said before, this code still has some glitches, but works quite well for now. I upload this second code and now I start with the joystick in the middle position. If I lower the joystick, as you can see, it will rotate into one direction. If I increase the joystick above the middle position, it will rotate to the opposite direction. Ok, let's see this example once again. Ok guys, so have in mind that the control resolution in this case is lower, because we are using the same PWM signal for forward or backwards rotations. We can still program the limits of the signal with this code, and the beeps are also working. I will try to improve this code the best that I can, and share that with you so you could use it for your projects. So guys, that's the update of this board. Stay tuned for the Kickstarter, I hope I will be able to make that as soon as possible and you will be able to order the board or probably the ESC already mounted. Leave a comment below if you are interested into buying this board and using this you will learn Arduino programming. You would receive the board, the code, the schematic and also a video with all the steps that you need to make this. So guys I hope that you learned something new about ESCs. I know that a lot of you guys will like this topic in case that you are building a custom made electric bike or something like that. If you like this video consider subscribing and please make sure you activate the notification bell, because otherwise you won't receive notification when I upload new videos. Also consider supporting my work on Patreon. So thanks again and see you later guys.